All right. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Wednesday, August 6, 2025. This is your morning update on the tropics. We are looking at a somewhat active Atlantic basin here today. We are rounding that corner into early August. We talked about it in the end of July that we would probably be seeing an uptick of activity as we worked into the first week of August. And here we are on August 6, and we have an Atlantic basin at least trying to wake up from its slumber and, and you know, get the sand out of its eyes. We have one active storm today, Tropical Storm Dexter up in the northern Atlantic. This is going to be moving away from the U.S., really no threat to land. We have an area of interest that the Hurricane Center is watching off the coast of Florida and the Carolinas. This is expected to drift towards the U.S. over the next couple of days and then likely begin to turn away from the coast of South and North Carolina. We have a very active intertropical convergence zone with a tropical wave we're watching back here, and then another system we're watching leave Africa in the next day or so. And we also have this little curious tropical wave out here in the Bahamas that the Hurricane Center is not tracking as of now, but it is worth taking a look at. So definitely a lot more going on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Hurricane Center's map to get a better idea of what's going on. So we have Dexter moving away. Again, this is a cone going away, no problem, no threat to land, not a big deal. We have this area with 40% chance of development off the southeast U.S. coastline. And they admit that uh, development will be slow over the next couple of days. And then we also have this uh, much broader uh, system they've drawn over here in the Atlantic for development as that tropical wave we talked about becomes a little more upright and moves into the Central Atlantic. We'll talk about that one towards the end of the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite, a little more zoomed in here, the Southeast US over on Tropical Tidbits. And this is the low pressure area we are watching right here. This is on the tail end of a frontal boundary. You can see the frontal boundary kind of stretched out towards where Tropical Storm Dexter is. There's definitely a cold front lingering right here. And when you have low pressure, developing on the tail end of a cold front, it's a very common thing to have happen, especially when you have some divergence aloft to pull some air away. It's no surprise that we have a low trying to spin up right here north of the Bahamas. And uh, this low, again, should wander kind of towards the northwest over the next couple of days. This will not likely move very fast at all. The steering flow in this general region is very weak. So that means wind shear is fairly low. Water temperatures are quite warm. So the odds that this does develop are probably trending upwards especially given that there is at least some surface circulation of some kind already starting, although the thunderstorm activity, very anemic, very weak right now. Uh, definitely as this works towards the west and gets into those warmer Gulf Stream waters, that current carrying that warm water up the east coast, this definitely could find a little bit better conditions to develop as we go into late this week. So the big threat for you know the Carolinas is mostly going to be rainfall. We can see here on the uh, European model that essentially the system kind of slowly wanders towards Thursday. And then towards Friday, it kind of gets about as close as it's going to get to Hatteras. We kind of have this broad low uh, kind of in this area right here. And again, the model could be underplaying this a little bit, but uh, it, it looks like, you know, whatever it does develop is going to be kind of nebulous. And um, there's probably not going to be a ton of low level forcing to get this to spin up faster. But you can see the low should be close enough to influence the U.S. East Coast. And there's probably going to be a significant amount of tropical moisture in this area associated with our low pressure system that will probably at least be an invest, if not a tropical depression by this point going into Friday. And you can see the Weather Prediction Center's rainfall forecast to come two to four inches of rain widespread throughout Monday through Monday morning across the southeast U.S. This is mostly of our coastal Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, Northern Florida will kind of be on the fringe of it, but uh, you guys will kind of be a little more just like enhanced afternoon thunderstorms, if you will. But uh, definitely some heavier downpours coming for much of the Carolina coastlines over the next couple of days. So that'll be the main threat. But most of our models, pretty pretty confident this is going to wind up turning away. This is the European ensembles going out to Monday. And you can see here a lot of the European ensembles are turning this up to the northeast as it moves towards Hatteras. I think it'll probably get a little bit closer than some of these models indicate. GFS is not very sold on it either. So our global is not very excited about it. So I think in this case, the globals may not be resolving it very well because it's not a very big system. So I wouldn't be completely trustworthy of these. I think that generally speaking, like the, the more deterministic run show, this might wind up drifting a little closer to Hatteras and could be some gusty winds, maybe some tropical storm conditions for the Outer Banks type thing and maybe uh, really far eastern North Carolina. 
But again, don't expect a major event out of this. These coastal tropical storms are pretty common, especially this time of year. No surprise there. So that's kind of the main story with this one. We also have this other wave that we're tracking down here near the Bahamas. We'll real quick talk about this. So this is a wave axis kind of down here in the northern Bahamas, and this is slowly moving to the west and is expected to kind of curb up into the Gulf uh, over the next couple of days. And uh, models very, very much not excited about this one. So if we back up here, we can see the wave axis on um, the European model again over top of tidbits. Moving into Florida tomorrow, you can see here, this is the wave axis right here. And it kind of just moves across Florida and lazily turns up into the Gulf. As we work through the weekend, the axis moves across Florida on Friday into Saturday. Definitely going to be enhancing afternoon thunderstorms. But uh, the, the models keep this thing very broad. And um, the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is the water temperatures are quite warm and the shear is quite low here. So if this, if we were going to have something overperform or the Hurricane Center kind of pop up something on their map that they don't have as of right now, I wouldn't be shocked. I'm a little surprised this isn't at least like a zero or a 10%. But uh, for whatever reason, we're not looking for much out of this. But this definitely is going to enhance rainfall, especially across western Florida and parts of the Panhandle, maybe even parts of central Gulf Coast going into the weekend, maybe even early next week. So we'll keep an eye on this one as well. But those are your two kind of main threats here along the coast. Now, if we zoom out a little bit, the other threat we are tracking today is a bit further out towards Africa. So we have what we have, you know, our African wave train is starting into early August. This is a, the time of year that we start seeing the MDRs, what we call the main development region, our area between Africa and the Caribbean kind of come alive. And we have a fairly strong wave or two. So this wave axis is kind of buried in what we call the ITCZ, the intertropical convergence zone today. We have some Saharan dust and high pressure moving off of Africa ahead of this. And our wave is kind of slowly moving behind it along to the west. We also have yet another wave trying to consolidate here just now leaving the coast. So you kind of got this monsoon trough, if you will, kind of uh, set up like this. And then what happens is these waves will generally break out of the monsoon trough and lift out of it over time, especially as these bursts of high pressure move past and kind of pull the wave up behind it. You see these get plucked out and have a little bit better chance to develop. So one of the big things we're looking at on our, on our computer models is what happens down the road with this. We know that through the rest of the week and into the weekend, this is probably not going Going to develop much maybe late this weekend but uh, what happens is you get this thing early on Monday morning sitting somewhere right here you know you can see Florida and the map and everything you can see the uh, Northern Antilles Virgin Islands Puerto Rico down here so the wave is going to be significantly north and west of or north and east rather of the Caribbean going into Monday the question becomes, does the wave turn up and out to sea like many of the European ensembles do, pull this thing north into an area of weakness where Dexter was, maybe our North Carolina low will be, does it just follow that same weakness and move northward, or does it follow the southern part of this envelope and continue further west, which would be a bit of a problem because as high pressure builds in ahead of it, it's going to be kind of running out of room to recurve, and then it could put somewhere in the U.S. East Coast on notice for some kind of impact going into the later part of next week. The issue is that some of our models do indicate this. The GFS does not see nearly as much of a signal that this will turn out to see where the European model does. We can see this divergence pretty clear on the model data. If you go back to tropical tidbits, you can see here 18Z on Saturday. This is a forecast model for Saturday afternoon. Our wave axis has pretty much stood upright. And again, we are you know kind of off to the northeast of the Caribbean islands. High pressure aloft. And then we kind of see the same thing on the GFS model, valid for the same time, 18Z Saturday, high pressure, a little bit more extensive, and the wave a little bit further south. You know, not terribly further south, but it is a little bit further south. So you can kind of see that difference there. Uh, but when we run this out another day or two, this is when things get really interesting. So we go into, say, the end of Sunday, late Sunday night into early Monday. We'll put you at 0Z on both models. And all of a sudden, we kind of see this divergence a lot more. The European model, if we circle it, would be somewhere right about here on the map. And then if we go over to the GFS, it is much further to the south, like several hundred miles further south. And what happens is the European model just continues up into that upper low where the GFS just kicks this thing off to the west. So we kind of have this divergence point of the, the wave lifts out, 
it comes right here. And then this is the fork in the road where the Europeans carrying us out to sea. The GFS is insisting that it will carry further west. And again, if we go further west, then we have to have yet another opportunity to recurve. And as you go further west, you begin to run out of real estate. That's the kind of concern here. So uh, models do see differences in high pressure aloft around this time. You can see the same thing here. Uh, the European just a little bit weaker with the high and the GFS a little bit stronger with the high. And you kind of get that butterfly effect. I will say looking at the general water vapor background imagery of the Atlantic right now, there doesn't seem to be a really, really clear recurve sign. You know, you kind of have this very strong jet ripping across the North Atlantic, but there really aren't a lot of big troughs coming in. This is kind of a zonal uh, polar front jet and it's very far north uh, for this time of year. This is about what you'd expect. And you can kind of see the center of the, of the high pressure is kind of centered off more to the east right now. Um, but there are kind of like lobes of the high kind of sticking out further west. I just it doesn't seem like the cleanest recurve pattern, especially if this high were to build in a little bit more. Again, you kind of have the waves have to ride the flanks of the high and then every subsequent run, you know, you see the flank build a little bit and it kind of like. You know, it's not the cleanest recurve pattern in the world. So I think that the models might be overestimating how fast this wave will develop. Most of them have this thing as some kind of organized system by Saturday or Sunday. I'm thinking maybe that they're underestimating the, the amount of dry air in the vicinity of this. And they're probably overestimating the potential here because the Central Atlantic, Tropical Atlantic, is just not particularly warm right now. It's a little warm in a few patches, but it doesn't have that look that we typically see with really active hurricane seasons. And we also know that the tropical forcing the MJO kind of Kelvin wave influences we were looking for to roll into early August don't have the signal that we thought they were going to have. So there are a lot of flies in the ointment here. And what I'll, what I'll say about all this is I would be cautious of this wave just because I think it'll probably stay a little weaker, which would also lend to it curving a little bit more westward. Uh, stronger waves are more likely to feel upper level influences in turn. Weaker waves generally carry further west. Um, so we will have to watch this, but it's going to be like another five to six days before this is any serious concern uh, to us at all. Um, you know, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. And then looking further down the road, this is a lot of spaghetti slop, but the European model is basically showing us that this is wave one right here, this kind of like axis of lows. This right here is wave number two. So the second wave that comes off Africa winds up cutting much further south and goes in the Caribbean. And this is at the end of the model run. This is going into the 16th. This is a week from this coming Saturday. Uh, this could be a more robust threat to the Caribbean. This could be our first long track significant threat of the season, especially if wave number one up here is able to kind of clear a bit of a path for wave number two, then we could have a little bit more of something to talk about as we were around, around the corner into mid August. We definitely are seeing a stronger signal from both the GFS and the Euro that this could be an issue going down the road. So that's what I got for you guys today on your tropical update. Kind of long, but there was a lot to talk about. And again, looking more towards long-term systems here. Again, number one, Dexter, gone, not a problem. Number two, this little guy right here wanders towards the Carolina coast, maybe brushes by some tropical storm impacts possible on the Outer Banks and heavy rainfall from Georgia to North Carolina. But again, not a significant threat. Our little wave here in the Bahamas will definitely enhance thunderstorms this weekend across central and southern Florida, maybe parts of the eastern Gulf Coast, but for now does not look like it's going to have much of a window to develop, but we will keep an eye on it. Our wave number four here expected to get to a fork in the road late this week. Maybe it recurves, maybe it carries further west. If it carries further west, it will be a concern. If it turns north, it's no concern. And then wave number five, highly expected to stay further south and travel into the Caribbean. Long-term impacts possible, but uh, very fuzzy right now because we are talking about, you know, 10 plus days out before that's an issue. So that's what I got for you guys. As always, thanks for watching and have a good one.